So in today's video, I'm going to share you my experience for the past six years, how I've managed to uh, optimize our AAA game Counter-Attack. You can of course download it from Google Play or Apple Store, links are in the description. And in this video, I'm going to share you my top 10 tricks and tips on how to optimize your mobile game and create such a masterpiece running on 60 FPS up to 120 FPS. So let's just start guys. So tip number one, always use occlusion cooling in your game. As I'm walking around my level, you can see that some objects are hiding and others are popping in. This way it will increase the performance and it will ease out the rendering time for your GPU. You can access it through window rendering occlusion cooling. And in the bake section, you have the smallest occluder, smallest hole and back face threshold. So tip number two, as you can see here in my Maya project, I've created this scene by modeling it, but everything is on separate objects like the window, the facade of the building, uh, the roof and the glasses on the roof. All right. So what you need to do is in Unity, you need to combine all the elements that share the same texture and material. I combine them by using a plugin from the Unity Asset Store, which is Mesh Combine Studio. And this will end up with fewer draw calls, which will increase your performance by a lot. So tip number three, always bake your lightning and use light map baking. As you can see over here, I use the progressive CPU and set up of uh, 12 samples per uh, direct, indirect and environment. I also use 19.1 for my light map resolution. And this is because I want to get, uh, as you can see over here in the bake light map, I want to get two sprite sheets uh, for my lightning. And this is because when you have two sprite sheets, you are adding two draw calls to your uh, performance. And I always try to keep for my mobile game between one and three sprite sheets, depending on the size of the map, but always use as few as possible sprite sheets in the lightning data, because this will increase your performance and it will drop down your draw calls. Of course, your map will need to look good. So everything between one and three is great for a mobile game and keep the resolution to 2K max. Tip number four, always use sprite atlases where you can in your game. So here I'm showing you my level and in this atlas, which is 2K by 2K, I've managed to put a lot of objects here, my barrels, my toilet, uh, some of the roof, etc. Let me just show you uh, the toilet UVs. Let me just get to that toilet, here you go. Let me open my UV editor. Here you can see my UVs of the toilet. So I've managed to put a lot of objects over here and reuse them in my map. And how this looks in Unity. Here you have uh, the Sprite Atlas and I've set the max size to 2K and it is 0.9 megabytes. Tip number five, always use mobile shaders when you can. We're using the built-in render pipeline. So here in the mobile section, you can use everything and those are very performant shaders. The next shader that you can use are legacy shaders, which are uh, performing pretty good on mobile. If you want to create transparent geometry like glasses, you can go under the legacy shaders and use everything over here in order to get the effect that you want. Tip number six, always use keyframe reduction or keyframe compression on your animation. Here you can see my M4 shooting animation. Let me just show it to you. All right, pretty smooth, pretty good. And I'm using keyframe reduction over here with a rotation, position and scale error of 0.2, which means around 20% uh, keyframe reduction from the original animation over here. And why I'm using this is just simply because I want to reduce the memory size inside my game. And you have another option, which is keyframe reduction and compression. But when I use this, it's gonna create some jiggery effects and some artifacts in my animation. So I'm just sticking with the keyframe reduction. But if you are creating a, let's say a third person game or top down game, you can also add up a compression. And in our case, because our weapon is first person and I don't want any kind of uh, strange artifacts, I'm just sticking with the keyframe reduction. Tip number seven. You can create screen scale resolution in your game. What this means is right now our game is uh, rendering on 100% of the pixels of the phone, but you can scale it down in order to boost the performance of the GPU. Let's say let's put 30% 
and you can see we have a pixel style old school game but the performance will boost a lot because we are rendering fewer and fewer pixels so this is very common and handy uh, method in order to render your game on a mobile phone because sometimes mobile phones can uh, support up to 2 3k resolution but they, their gpu and cpu cannot support this and pretty much when when you're scaling down your resolution to 70 or 80 percent there is no visual difference in terms of graphics tip number eight use reflection probes which are baked in your level don't use real-time reflections here in my scene i've just placed one reflection probe because each reflection probe will add additional draw code to your level and here you can see that it contains all the level here so when i'm walking around my level i get the reflections from this probe it is not accurate uh, perfectly but it does the job and as you can see here my knife over here is getting pretty good reflections inside here the problem is that it's not getting the bluish from the containers but it looks pretty fine for a mobile game tip number nine use light probes they are baked and they're very good performance on a mobile device they are creating this uh, uh, effect from going your character into light and dark spots and they're just letting the character or darkening it uh, from transitioning to light and dark spots and now i'm going to show with this sphere right now it's uh it has lightning on it and right now we are adding a little bit of darkness and as you can see it interpolates between different light probes this is very good for your performance not to use real-time lightning and finally tip number 10 here uh, a simple canvas and we have a timer and we have a shopping cart and i've separated the timer and the shopping cart into two different canvases and why i did that is because each element uh, that is changed in different canvas will refresh the whole canvas so for example in canvas one we have the buy button and in canvas two we have uh, the timer and the timer will refresh on each second and if we had the buy button inside uh, the canvas too we're gonna refresh two items on each second and we're gonna have two draw calls and that's why i separate them in two different canvases because the buy button will be only refreshed when we press the, the button uh, from our touch input and the canvas too the time canvas will be refreshing on each second so what we are gonna have in the end is uh, we're gonna have one draw call each second and if we had put the buy button inside the timer canvas we're gonna have two draw calls each second so keep this in mind uh, that you should separate your canvases by how often something is refreshing on your screen 